Uh, welcome everybody to the second session from Purelight. I will give a talk about a new resins for monoclonal antibody purification and uh, recombinant protein purification. But before moving into the specifics, I'd like to say a few words about Purelight. Uh, so Purelight has been around since the early 80s with more than 40 international offices. And it's actually the second largest supplier of ion exchange resins with over 1,200 employees and <coughs> three global production sites, one in Asia, one in Europe, and one in the US. We also have five global R&D sites, including the Center of Excellence in Wales. And in Wales, that's where we are focusing on the new development of a platform, um, a chromatography platform for, for antibody purification. Uh, but even as a supplier uh, for ion exchange resins, Purite has actually been in the business of life science for more than 25 years, producing APIs and excipients and since a number of years ago also chromalite synthetic resins for peptide purification and life tech resins for enzyme immobilization <coughs> which you heard about in the previous talk. So Purelight is familiar with regulatory bodies and have plus 25 years experience of producing pharmaceutical active pharmaceutical ingredients in FDA approved production sites. So we have a team of regulatory staff uh, familiar with compliance monitoring and maintenance and hosting regular audits to our production sites. So moving over to the Presto, the, which is the trade name for our Agaros platform. So maybe three years ago, we decided to move into <coughs> protein purification. Uh, and in particular, monoclonal antibody purification. And when choosing the material to produce a base matrix, we decided to go for agarose because it has some, it's the dominating material polymer for <coughs> chromatography of proteins. It's kind of the industrial golden standard. And why that is, is because it's extremely hydrophilic, which means you have very little unspecific binding. It has a low matrix volume, so an agarose resin typically consists about 6 to 7 percent agarose, which means you have a lot of volume uh, or capacity for proteins within the beads. It's very easy to conjugate with ligands, so if you have a good agarose base matrix, you could basically produce all types of different chromatography media, like ion exchangers, hydrophobic interaction chromatography resins, and affinity resins. It's also, least but not least important, is very stable in alkaline conditions. You can use for ion exchange one mole of sodium hydroxide for both cleaning in place and sanitization. Uh, and you can even store it in weaker alkaline solutions between campaigns. So <coughs> having made the choice of agarose, we decided to do a number of different particle sizes to cover most possible protein applications. So we went from our smallest particle, that is 45 micron bead, because if you go lower, then you start to get problems with pressure flow. Uh, the largest bead we currently do is a 90 micron bead. And if you go even higher, you start to get <coughs> limitations because of the long diffusion path into the beads. So roughly a year ago, we, we launched the first products, uh, ion exchange resins, and these are traditional SP and Q ligands. It's kind of the workhorse ligands in, in protein chromatography. And we choose to start with that because they are familiar and they are used in a number of established processes. It's well known, there's a lot of literature, so it's easy to use to develop processes using standard buffers and conditions. Uh, with the new base matrices, we also get high flow velocities, which makes them scalable for large-scale production. 
what we also did is the way we emulsify and cross-link the resins, we get very good capacity without having to do any extra grafting like <coughs> some people tend to do to kind of enhance the surface and get high capacity. That normally has a negative impact on the resolution. So our ion exchanges are plain agarose resins with just this type of ligands. And once again, they have very good chemical stability, allowing storage in sodium hydroxide. Uh, so those are already commercialized. We also sell the pure base matrix for custom design of resins. But having done this, the next step, if you talk about antibody purification, is of course... Oh, sorry, I forgot this slide. So the performance, yeah, we have a very good performance for the SP ligands. The smallest speed SP45, we achieve more than 100 grams per liter of resin, which is, in this business, is a very good capacity. While maintaining a good resolution, so in one particular case, we could easily remove the aggregate levels to less than 1%. And once again, we have very good flow properties in these type of high-flow agarose space matrices. So the next step, when we were taking the next step, we were looking into some pharma challenges. And I think it's kind of common knowledge that pharma has a problem with R&D costs. There is less and less new medicines coming onto the market, and the approval rates of new therapies, therapies is fairly low. So one way to address the high failure rate, or actually the costs associated with the high failure rates in clinical trials, is of course to bring down the cost of producing material for early clinical trials. So if you take a look at the cost of clinical trials, the raw material cost, protein A kind of sticks out like being significantly higher than all the other resins. It's definitely the most expensive consumable raw material when you look at production for clinical trials, which is something you just do maybe once to supply the clinical trial. While the resins that are on the market, typically the latest generation of protein A resins, offers more than 100 cycles, but in the clinical trials, you only use them for typically a couple of cycles, sometimes even up to 20 cycles, but typically lower. So high cost, low values. So our approach to this, <coughs> uh, we, so we kind of took a fresh approach to this and decided to <coughs> design a new type of protein A, or rather a protein A resin, to address the needs of lowering the cost. Uh, we call it Presto AC, so it's A for protein A and C for clinical trials. It's an affinity resin designed for early phase clinical trials. And we have optimized the matrix, the ligand, the linker combination to get a very good binding capacity using a natural protein A. Uh, we get more than 40 grams at 4.8 minutes residence times of capacity. And we have data to support <coughs> more than 20 reuse cycles. It's not an alkaline stable protein A, but protein A as such is very stable. So for this need, 20 cycles or less, you can actually use 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide and still retain more than 80% of the initial dynamic binding capacity. Um, so looking at the sodium hydroxide stability, here we have a chart um, on the Y axis. We have the, dynamic, the relative dynamic binding capacity. And on the x-axis, we have exposure time to 0.5 molar sodium, 0.1 and 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. So it could be a little bit hard to see, but this is over five hours exposure time. These are 0.1 molar, and we have the Presto AC and the leading uh, agarose analog. And here we have exposure at 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide for up to five hours. And you can see with the Presto AC, you still have about 80% of the initial dynamic binding 
capacity left, which is pretty good. And in reality, most companies would use sodium hydroxide concentrations probably be a little bit weaker between 0.1 and 0.5 molar um, sodium hydroxide, a little bit depending on the strategy of the company. So we made the matrix and uh, to further <coughs> bring down the cost, because cost is time, and one way to address time is to provide the resins in the pre-packed format. So the Presto AC, we've introduced a format called Process Ready. So these are pre-packed columns uh, up to 14 liters with 20 centimeter bed height designed for clinical manufacturing. Uh, but we also have pre-packed columns all the way from what we call robo columns that is used for high throughput screening and uh, mini columns mini chrome columns, two centimeter and 10 centimeter bed height, typically used for process development and design of experiment to check the robustness and validate the performance of the process. Um, so with that, we have like of the basis of a chromatography platform for antibody purification with the Presto AC, which is an 85 micrometer affinity capture resin and the two different ion exchanges in three different particle sizes. So once again, <coughs> Presto process ready columns. We think they are cost effective because they do eliminate expensive and time consuming cleaning validation. You don't really have any, well, you don't have any challenges during packing, which also brings down the risk because packing as such is a risk moment where you can introduce um, by a burden and you can also have failed packings. So both time and cost. Uh, if we look at a standard process, so we designed standard chromatography resins for a standard process. This is a classical antibody purification process. You start with the Presto AC or a protein A chromatography, cation exchanger in bind dilute to remove aggregate, host cell proteins, DNA, etc. And then a scavenging step using a Q, a Q resin to remove trace amounts of, of DNA and host cell proteins. Depending on the strategy of the company, you can also do this the other way. So you take the press the Q or the anion exchange first in the flow through step and then adjust the pH and load it onto the cation exchanger for final polishing. So now from today I think we supply all these three resins uh, in, <coughs> in the same pre-packed format up to 14 liter scale. Uh, looking at the economics is like a case example where we Look at the cost of producing three kilos of antibodies from a thousand liter reactor with a titer of three grams per liter. We compared our a smaller Presto AC process ready column, 20, which has a column volume 3.3 .3 liters, with the larger ones, 14 liters, and also Map Select Sure, which is like the dominating protein A resin on the market in the 10 liter columns. And if we look at the cost to produce these three kilo, the column cost, you can see while using the smallest column, you can bring it down to actually 25% of the comparable cost to the Map Select Sure. However, here the process time would be close to 20 hours, which is in many cases too long. I think most manufacturers would like to do the proteinase step during one working shift, so less than 10 hours. So we you take about eight hours with this resin compared to 10 hours with the maps like sure, but that's roughly half the column cost price. Um, so like I said, this was driving by kind of trying to bring down the cost of production of material for clinical trials. However, if you're lucky enough to get your product into phase three, then the risk of failure, of course, drops, and you would like to use a resin uh, with a longer lifetime. 
So to address that, we are launching a new, sorry, a new alkaline stable protein A resin, um, which is under development still, but it should be available on the market Q1 2016. And I just have a few dynamic binding capacity data. This is Map Select Shore. These are two protein A prototypes. Residence times at three minutes, so you get about 40 here for Map Select Shore. About the same capacity for our large pore size resin. Then we have one with a smaller pore. So the pore size kind of balances the dynamic binding capacity. If you have a smaller pore size, you get more surface, higher capacity, but shorter kinetic or, or, or less fast kinetics. So you can achieve very high binding capacity, but at fairly high resonance times. But we are pretty convinced we can produce a resin that match the performance of the market leader map select sure. And like I said, that will be <coughs> on the market early next year. So that's where we are with respect to Agaros, our Agaros portfolio. And after the Protein A, of course, we will continue uh, to put out new types of chromatography resins on the market. With respect to our production capacity, we are now at the stage where we've just are in the process of upgrading our pilot plant capacity. So we will have a capacity to produce 5,000 liters per year. But we have already started the design of a full-scale production site that should be qualified and operation ready by the end of next year and up to full-scale working with a capacity of 100 cubic meters per liter early 2017 still being part of a major company, Purolite. We do have global warehouse capability. These resins, the manufacturing sites, will be placed in, Car or is placed in Cardiff, uh, just outside of Cardiff, very close to the, uh, our R&D facilities, which is really good. And of course, all of our sites are accredited according to the ISO system. Uh. And when it's so, when it comes to confidence and security, we have data, of course, from the pilot plant. We have excellent batch to batch reproducibility. We have carefully selected raw material suppliers, and we have qualified second suppliers. We are already have the final drafts of the regulatory support files for the ion exchanges, and we are working on the regulatory support files for the new protein A resins. So in summary, we think we have launched, or we have launched uh, a number of resin addressing the need for clinical manufacturing and also for large scale manufacturing. And as a technology party, we do deliver process excellence when your risk is the highest. And with that, I think we have time for questions. Mm -hmm.